Hi everyone, welcome to another financial analysis video with myself, Moeed Amin, and my colleague, Ted Wayman. Uh, before we get into the company Activision Blizzard that we're going to be looking at, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially as uh, you will see later on, if you requested us to analyze a company, as a subscriber, you will get instant notification of when we publish this. Now, the point of this podcast is to help you, no matter what you do, to become more proficient at understanding finance, right? So it is money makes the world go round. And as Warren Buffett said, if you can't, uh, you know, finance is the language of business. So it stands to reason if you cannot understand the language of business, then you cannot really do business very well. So whether you are an investor who's looking at improving their investment thesis, or if you're in sales or in business in general, and you're looking to sell your products and services to someone, you better start knowing about the finances of those companies and what story they, they tell. So let's go into Activision Blizzard. Very well-known company, so not too much of an introduction, really. They're a games development business, and um, they are both in the S&P 500 and the Fortune 500 company. So it's probably one of the largest, if not the largest, video game company in the world. Um, and they are the creators and owners of very well-known games. So uh, they, they own King, which uh, develops Candy Crush, uh, Call of Duty, uh, Diablo, and various other uh, games as well. So very well-known company. Um, we did get this as a request from uh, one of our viewers. Uh, so the, uh, the name pop, uh, popping up now, as you will see. Uh, so Ayan Ahmed, uh, here is your analysis uh, and interestingly he feels that this is an undervalued business so we will come on to the share price later on because they've been in the public public market since 1993 and if you invested in them back then you would have certainly seen a good profit however uh, when you zoom in it tells a different story so the last five years five years has been a roller coaster and in the last year actually they've been on a decline so we will talk about that later on and, and talk about that in terms of the context of the financial analysis that we're about to take you through now. So Ted, let's, let's take it away. I'm really looking forward to this one since I'm a, quite a big gamer and uh, interested to see what the finances say about this company. Excellent. Well, good to see you, Moe. Um, yes, thank you very much. I'm afraid um, I, I have played Candy Crush in the past. Um, I have never played Call of Duty. Um, I think my kids are, are more into that than, than me. So um, anyway, let's jump in straight to the, um, uh, the uh, numbers. So we're going to look, first of all, we're going to look at their annual report. Um, so this is the sort of formalized audited figures um, uh, from 2020. Now, I know that that's out of date. We're now in December 2021 when we're filming this. So we are going to look at that and then we're going to bring you up to date with their third quarter um, uh, figures as well and see how the business is actually performing. So these are the audited figures. You can see things like Call of Duty, Candy Crush um, uh, on their front page. But we uh, unfortunately are going to leave the pretty pictures behind and go through to the numbers, which is uh, of greater interest to us. So <coughs> here come the numbers. Let me just find those. Uh, and um, we're on to the income statement here, first of all. So uh, we're looking at 2020. That's the left-hand column. We are dealing in millions. So net revenues, total revenues, $8 billion. So they're making a revenue of $8 billion. That is up from the previous year of 25%. It's a little drop, actually, um, from 2018 to 2019. So maybe there's a kind of you know, that's kind of reflecting the bouncing around of the share price, um, but the share, uh, but the revenue is up uh, 25 percent um, uh, uh, from 2019 to 2020. Uh, we then got the costs and I've kind of divided these out. So if we take these numbers here as the cost of sales, um, then they're operating at about a kind of 60, 58 percent um, gross margin. And then down the bottom, we've got the cost of actually running the business. That's the SGNA uh, and any restructuring costs as well, which they seem to be doing a lot of restructuring on a very regular basis, surprisingly enough. Um, uh, and uh, if we take out all of those costs, 
then they're on about a 40 percent operating margin. OK, um, and then we kind of expect that this is a technology company. So they pay a lot of money to develop Call of Duty. They then get it out there. Uh, and once it's out there, you know, if you buy uh, a Call of Duty, it doesn't cost them anything because they've already developed it. So a sort of a big, a big amount of investment going on. And we can see that this kind of this product development they've actually highlighted and said, look, we want you to know that you know this is the product development of the new of the future um, uh, effectively so there's an argument that says actually we should take that what we call below the line rather than above the line and, and, and include that with um, uh, with the uh, cost of running the business um, so big investment in in future games you know billion dollars um, in the kind of you know the next and, and that's really what these guys will be priced on so um, you know the kind of the game of today is not going to be the game of tomorrow I grew up with things like Snake on my Nokia uh, and clearly that's not a kind of a big um, game these days or Pac-Man for example although you know, I'm sure there'll be a few people will tell me that Pac-Man is making a resurgence and never went away uh, but yeah very much uh, investing in the future so um, you know really bottom line very little debt um, a little bit of interest sitting there. So they've got a little bit of interest, a little bit of debt, um, uh, but very, very profitable. So there you go, $2 billion profit up from 1.5 billion um, the previous year, which was in fact a little fall on the on the year before um, because of their fall in sales, but still 30%, more than 30% net margin, very, very profitable indeed. So um, income statement looking pretty good. Let's go and have a look at their balance sheet if we can find it. I think the balance sheet is just before the income statement. Here it is. So in terms of their balance sheet, the first thing we notice, so they got 23 billion of assets um, and they are stuffed full of cash. So lots and lots of cash with a little bit of accounts receivable. Um, and then what else have they got? They've got a, a, a you know, really in, their, in the rest of their um, uh, assets, they've got lots of goodwill. So that goodwill will reflect the fact that they have grown by buying things like King, for example. So when they bought King, they have paid a big price for it. What they actually physically got in terms of the assets was a couple of blokes in mum's attic and their laptops. Uh, and therefore, it will have been all goodwill, um, which is not a problem because they're buying the future or the future potential income stream, um, but just to, uh, to recognize that. So that 23 billion uh, of uh, assets, uh, about 10 billion is goodwill, almost half of it. So, you know, 10 billion of goodwill, 8 billion of, of cash, um, uh, and, 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 and a few other bits and pieces in there as well. On the liability side, um, you know, really very low liability. So look at this, you know, the current liabilities is incredibly low. You compare the current liabilities to the current assets liquidity, just not a problem at all. Um, what is interesting is that not only do they have their kind of usual accounts payable, which is almost nothing. So um, looks to me, if you're supplying this company, they got so much cash, they'll just pay your invoice on time. They're really not interested in messing their suppliers around. Uh, and also we see this number here, 1.7 billion of deferred revenue. That's a revenue that they've received that they haven't yet earned. So this will be, you know, people subscribing to their games, you know, they're, they're buying the actual games, but then they're subscribing, paying uh, subscription fees, uh, and they pay them in advance. So they pay the subscription, and then they get provided the service. So this really helps the company's cash flow. We'll see that in the cash flow, but also is why they are stuffed so full of cash as well. Um, they do have a little bit of debt, um, not a huge amount, 3.6 billion. Um, so relatively speaking, it's, it's, it's not an issue uh, for these guys. You know, they can easily afford it, very profitable. Uh, and the cost of that debt is relatively low. Um, but they are mainly funded through equity. So um, while there is a, a you know, little bit of debt um, funding the business. It's mainly this 15 billion of equity and this 15 billion of equity, a lot of investment by the shareholders and then the retained profits. But this retained profit of about 10 billion, really what we should probably be doing is actually reading it together with these uh, the, the number above, which is the treasury stock. So that 10 billion, that 9.6 or 9.7 billion here. So this is the total amount of profit the company has made ever since it started trading and not yet returned to the shareholders in the form of a dividend. However, what it has been doing is share buyback. So that treasury stock is, uh, you know, again, an opportunity for them to buy their, um, buy their own shares. You'll notice that they haven't been doing any share buybacks during the year, but certainly in the past, it's another way of getting money back to the shareholders through capital gain rather than through uh, dividends. 
So there is the balance sheet. So balance sheet basically looking really very, very strong balance sheet. Um, you know, no issues there. Um, we've got a little bit on the movement in um, equity. Here it is. Uh, and you'll just notice um, that these guys, you know, they are. Let me just uh, make that a little bit smaller so we can see that. Here we go. Um, so what we can see here very obviously is that they are paying out dividends. So there's the dividends. Uh, each year they are paying out dividends. So these guys are a dividend payer and we'll expect to see that in terms of the share price uh, in that little dividend yield um, indication. So you will be getting a, a little bit of income from these guys, but you know they're really there for, for capital growth. Here's their cash flow. Um, so yes, they are profitable, uh, 2 billion. Um, and yes, they are generating cash as we expected. So lots and lots of cash generation. Um, little bit of investment interestingly enough this this investment is really down to um you know we need to sort of you know take these two numbers here which is the 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 the, the buying of maturity uh, of, of for sale investments basically that's just parking cash in a savings account that's the way to think about those two numbers so here we can see the capital expenditure pretty small uh, for this company capital expenditure because they don't really you know they just need you know nice you know, good uh, top of the range laptops, and that's about it. So they don't need property, plant and uh, equipment and machinery, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit of investment, um, uh, which is fine. Um, and uh, then down the bottom here is their um, financing. Uh, and we notice that, for example, they are doing a bit of refinancing on their debt. That's um, these two numbers together. Um, and you'll notice that their debt has gone up. Um, uh, they, so they are doing a little bit of refinancing, but you know their proceeds that they get from borrowing money is greater than uh, repaying the money. So they've gone up by about a billion. Again, not a problem because they can afford it. They're paying out those dividends. So a little bit of income coming the way of the shareholders. Um, uh, and on a net basis, they've raised a bit of extra cash by just borrowing some more because they can, uh, and because it's cheap. Uh, and, and they've got just lots of cash sitting on the balance sheet. And that balance sheet, uh, that cash gives them opportunity because if they see a, uh, you know, a gaming company that they really like, that fits nicely with them, you know, they can move very quickly. They've got 8 billion in cash. They can just buy them just like that. So there's um, our annual report and account. So uh, all looking pretty good. Let's just jump forward and look at the, um, uh, the latest set of numbers. So here we go. This is their... Um, uh, this is their, their 10Q. Uh, so the 10Q is the quarterly report. Um, and this is for the three, uh, sorry, the six. Uh, this is for the nine months, uh, my mistake. So the nine months. So we're interested in this. Uh, we're going to be looking at this column here. This is the nine months uh, for 2021. Um, they also give you the three months as well, if you're interested. So you can kind of do that analysis. And they're comparing the nine months, uh, the first nine months of 2021, comparing it to the first nine months of 2020. Um, and again, back of an envelope calculation, we take the net revenues, uh, we divide it by three, multiply by four. So we kind of uplift it um, by three quarters. Uh, and that gives us an indication of where they might end up. Uh, and if they continue at this, they're going to end up with about 8.9 billion of sales, which will represent a 9% increase on 2020. So sales will be going up 2020, uh, uh, up, up by about 9%. Um, they uh, just scrolling down a little bit. Hold on. Uh, so again, still very, very profitable. Um, they're still maintaining their 32%. Um, uh, margin. So it's 27% in, in 2020, 32% uh, for the first quarter. Um, the, you know, the, the gross margin is, is steady at about 60%. Um, the operating margin uh, is going up, uh, which means that they're getting their fixed costs under control and improving profitability. Um, and therefore, their net margin, the bottom line has gone up uh, from 2020, 27% up to uh, 32% in 2021, and they should be able to uh, maintain that. So um, it's it's looking, you know, again, just you know, it's growing, it's profitable, um, it's all, it's 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 ticking all the right boxes effectively. You know, that's that that that's looking pretty good. Um, the balance sheet, you know, not a lot of change. Oops, we go uh, up to the balance sheet. Here we go. So not a lot of change. Again, what do we see? We see, you know, companies stuffed full of cash. Lots of goodwill, you know, hasn't really changed there. Um, you know, quite a lot of debt, um, uh, and uh, the rest will be funded through equity. So, you know, you can see there's the um, the 15 billion that we looked at earlier has now gone up to 17 billion in terms of their equity share buybacks. They're not buying back any more shares. Um, they've made a lot of, you know, that profit 
um, uh, that they've made uh, for the first three quarters. You know, again, most of it's been kept back in the business. Some of it's been paid out to the shareholders. So our summary is, you know, from a financial perspective, you know, if you like the gains, fantastic. If you like, you know, but you know, in terms of the company, this is absolutely rock solid. Um, you know, very profitable, lots of cash, very strong balance sheet. You know, lots of cash sitting on the balance sheet, lots of cash generation, lots of flexibility, little bit of debt, but nothing, uh, nothing to worry about. Um, you know, and again, you know, very, very solid company. However, as uh, you know as well as I do. Um, that, uh, you know, when we're pricing a company, we're pricing it on the future, not on the past. And we mentioned the um, share price. So let's look at it here. So yes, if you had invested back in 1993, if you had that kind of vision that these the guys were going to win, um, then you would have made a lot of money and they have been bouncing around. So um, uh, again, maybe the timings aren't exact, um, but you can see that, um, you know, towards sort of 2000 and uh, end of 2018, uh, a big old drop. Uh, and, and maybe that's where we see, you know, the drop in sales 2018 to 2019 and people say, ah, OK, so people have stopped paying Candy Crush. They stopped playing Call of Duty. These guys are yesteryear. They're kind of the Pac-Man of the past. You know, no one's going to be uh, buying them. Um, uh, and they've kind of defied their critics and pushed back up again and said no. Uh, and, and then they're all back up again and suddenly they're back down again. And so um, uh, our, our request is, are they undervalued? So um, let's look at their valuation and some of the key metrics. Uh, if we look down the bottom, uh, highlighted for us, the market cap is $48 billion. $48 billion on a net book value um, uh, of, uh, you know, the balance sheet is about $17 billion. So they are, you know, 183% um, uh, trading at 183% premium. You know, they're also, you know, you know over two times um, uh, uh, you know, over two times, um, uh, uh, you know, the actual book value. Uh, but again, if you buy a company like this, you're not buying the assets, you're buying uh, the, um, uh, you're buying the, the ability to generate. And don't forget, lots of that asset is um, goodwill anyway. Um, in terms of their earnings, uh, we've got about 18 times earnings. So just so that we understand that if you flip that upside down, so that's the price to earnings ratio, that's the 47.9 billion over the uh, the earnings of uh, you know predicted earnings uh, you know I reckon predicted earnings are about 2.9 2.8 billion um, and therefore they're um, you know might on a sort of forward looking um, P ratio they're about um, a 16.8 um, uh, so it's nearly 17 times earnings um, so that's the price to earnings so if you flip it over and you say earnings to price you're getting at about a six percent yield so you know, would you buy this company on a 6% yield? You know what, the, 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 uh, the US is trading on 30 times. So the CAPE, uh, the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio um, uh, is 30 times. There's a lot of technology companies that are trading even higher than that. Facebook's on 30 times, for example. Tesla's on crazy, crazy um, multiples. So these guys, they do look a little bit neglected. I mean, you know, 18 is not cheap, cheap. It's not a screaming buy. Remember, we looked at Lloyd's Bank, which was seven times earnings. So these guys, but they are, you know, 18 times is not that bad and you are getting a dividend. It's a small dividend yield, but then the dividend is relatively small. But if they can't think of anything better to do with that cash, maybe they will th start to think about returning it. Um, I run a few other um, uh, ratios. So what's also interesting about these guys is if we look at the, you know, we can, this is the PE ratio. Um, if we look at the PEG ratio, so I'm just going to pull out um, uh, some of these, uh, um, uh, this, this analysis um, uh, onto the screen. Um, so these are some additional numbers. Uh, let me just clear my um, annotation. Here we go. So um, what we've got here is, um, so these are some of the valuation metrics that I kind of, I run. So um, just so we're clear, um, there's the price, um, there's the earnings, the price to earnings ratio is about um, uh, uh, 17 times earnings. Um, so obviously they, they're actually quoting um, 18 times, but you know, I'm looking, this is my forecast. So this is just you know, taking uh, the, uh, the net profit figure for the, for the year so far and just you know, you know, increasing it um, uh, by uh, you know, a quarter. Um, so there's my 6% yield. Um, dividend yield is very, very sl small, but then they're only paying about a small dividend. Um, I don't think that's a major problem. Um, uh, and there's no, no additional share buybacks going on. Um, what is quite interesting is, um, you know, down the bottom here, a, a few other metrics. 
we've got the uh, price to earnings growth. So what we look at here is the uh, the earnings per share prior year and, and this year. So if you look at the earnings per share for the prior year and you look at it for this year from the quarterly report that's available down the bottom of the um, of the income statement. Uh, and I just see if I can pull that back up again for you. So what I'm using, I'm using these numbers here. So there's the earnings per share at the end of last, uh, for, sorry, for the first uh, nine months of last year. Here's the earnings per share for the first nine months of this year. So comparing like with like. Um, so what we can see is the earnings per share has grown. Um, and if we go back um, to here, we can take um, you know, the, 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 the growth rate um, and therefore we end up with what's called the, uh, the, the price to earnings, um, uh, the price to earnings growth rate. So the peg um, uh, and the lower that is, the cheaper the company is. So this looks on a peg ratio relatively cheap. Um, I've also done that to include the dividend yield because it's not just capital growth, it's also the dividend yield that you're buying as well. Dividend yield is pretty small, um, but it still makes a difference. So what's known as the PEG-E ratio, the P-E-G-Y, um, and uh, that's a 0.64. And uh, there's also an additional ratio here, which is the share buyback yield, but they're not doing any share buybacks. So again, uh, that actually hasn't changed at all. That's also 0.64. Uh, and really kind of the, the, the metric here is, is if it's, um, if the, you know, the lower the number, the cheaper it is. If it's below one, then it looks cheap. So I think from these metrics here, I think, you know, Ahmed is right. Um, this is looking a pretty cheap stock, relatively speaking, um, and could well be um, a, a, an opportunity to buy into it. However, um, the caveat is always that, uh, you know, Activision Blizzard, they live in a very fickle world. So, you know, it's not like Coca-Cola where pe people just, you know, they just buy the drink and they carry on drinking it. And it's kind of like, you know, they make profits forever. Call of Duty is going is, is, is gonna to go the way of Pac-Man because the technology is, is changing. So, you know, you're buying into this company is buying into its ability to stay at the top of its game to produce the kind of the really compelling now they didn't produce candy crush they bought candy crush now, i'm not saying that they can't do that in the future but again there's that kind of that fickle gaming world you know are these guys going to maintain that um uh, that that kind of operating um uh, you know stratum you know uh, you know the simple answer is this i don't know you can see that you know they've kind of you know if you if you this is a, a chartist's approach here so if you kind of you know look at their trading um pattern here um you know effectively it looks like you know they're finding support here um uh, and that they are looking you know maybe that they're going to kind of you know they're going to do this you know and and, and that's going to be the, the you know the the, the the future and that's a very much again just a kind of a technical chartist approach um to this so it looks to me like they've got support it looking like, like a, a quite a good company um i would not be adverse to asking father christmas to put a couple of shares uh, in activision blizzard in my stocking this christmas moe let's 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 put it like that um so there is our analysis yeah, I think this would be in the probably not safe because no investment is truly safe, but certainly in the more stable part of the portfolio, similar to uh, Abbott Laboratories, I think that we looked at, which is a medical devices business, but high, slightly higher kind of dividend yields. And I think a better P ratio or similar P ratio, actually, from what we looked at. So that could be one that uh, you as the viewers could want to look at. So hopefully this was of value for you like share subscribe if you find it valuable do let your friends and family know about this video if they're interested in either doing business with them or if they're in, interested in investing in them with them and like to have some more information about the financials uh, and do leave a, a note in a comment section uh, to make your request about a company that you would like us to analyze if you're interested in them so do leave a note for us but until the next uh, episode thank you again thank you ted and we'll see you soon Okay, good to speak to you, Mary. Catch you later.